There we go. There we go. Oh. You see how it goes? Pastor Kathy is gone for like a day and everything falls apart? Oh. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to worship this morning. Uh, speaking of Pastor Kathy, she is gone this week because she is on a nice relaxing trip taking 25 youth down to New Orleans and doing the national or the ELCA youth gathering. So pray for calm and peace along the way, for safe travels, and that they could continue to grow in their faith as they have this wonderful opportunity. Um, we have ukulele afternoons coming up this Wednesday. Uh, we do have ukuleles in my office now. We've got five extras. Uh, so if you've ever been interested in learning or you want to come and watch me make a fool of myself as I play ukulele, I'll see you on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Uh, we have a new committee that's forming to create a church directory. This is long overdue. Um, so if you are interested in helping, you can get in touch with Pastor Kathy. Uh, it, it's such a helpful thing to be able to see pictures of the people in church so we can learn names, we can grow together as a community. Uh, we have a lot of things coming up at the end of July. We've got the New Alm Night Out, and there is a sign up on the youth board if you'd like to help with that. We've got a women's dinner and golf outing on July 29th. There's also a Foursquare tournament that's happening on August 5th, which will be super fun, and I will not complain when I lose. <laughs> you almost believe me, don't you? Ah, finally, um, at, we, we continue to pray for all of those on our prayer list and we also pray for our entire country, especially for former President Trump. Um, if you haven't seen the news, there was a shooting at one of his rallies yesterday, and he was hit in the ear. We, we believe in democracy, we believe in compassion, and we believe that violence is never going to be a solution. So we pray for Pres uh, former President Trump that he makes a full recovery, and we pray that our country can come together and find peace in this time. With all that said, I invite you to stand as you're able and we'll join in our gathering hymn. Come, let us worship God. Let us worship God. Welcome everyone to the love of God. Rest for the weary. Rest for the weary. Welcome everyone. the love of God, food for the hungry, food for the hungry, welcome everyone to the love of God. Hope for the children, hope for the children, welcome everyone to the love of God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. 
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. We'll take a moment for reflection. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Amen. God is a cup of cold water when you thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We'll join in our Kyrie. Let us pray. O God, from you come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with our readings. The reading for today is from Amos chapter 7, verses 7 to 15. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go flee away to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is the temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered to Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, But I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock. And the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Word of God, word of life. The psalm for today is Psalm 85, 
verses 8 to 13. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God a pathway. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, chapter 6. Glory to you, O Lord. King Herod heard of the disciples preaching, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. Officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, Yet out of regard for his oaths and for his guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid him in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated and come on up for a children's message. I think it's just you. That's okay. How's it going? I'm tired. I get it, man. I'm tired. So, uh, we're going to skip right over the gospel reading for some reason for the children's sermon. And we're going to look at this lovely picture. These are our youth and our chaperones who are headed out to New Orleans. 
They are riding a bus, which is probably a little bit cramped. Uh, it's a long way to drive, and they are going to get very sick of each other pretty quickly on a bus, right? You can imagine that? So I thought we would take some time and pray for them. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask everybody, what are some things we should pray for them for on this trip? What do you think? That they don't get sick of each other. That they don't get sick of each other. Good answer, yeah. What else should we pray for? Safe travel. Safe travel. To have fun. Absolutely. I hear they're going to the uh, Preservation Jazz Hall, which <sighs> I'm extremely jealous of. That's going to be so cool for them. What else should we pray for? Good weather and yeah, safety in that. You never know. Enjoy some of the best food in the United States. Those beignets, oh boy. Anything else? That they learn new things. I think that's pretty good. There are a lot of things we can pray for them for. We can give thanks that they're going on this trip. Um, we can also give thanks to God for our saviors who helped raise money to send them on this amazing trip so that they can grow in their faith. So let's say a word of prayer. Repeat after me. Holy God, thank you for these youth. Send them out to learn, to love, to enjoy, to be safe, to have a wonderful time, and everything else you see fit. Send them out and bring them home safely. Amen. Nice. Good work. You can head back. <laughs> oh. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So, it feels a little bit weird to read that story and follow it up with the gospel of our Lord. Ah, <sighs> it is a strange story. It really is. But there's something extra strange about this, and since I had to learn about it, you all get to suffer with me, okay? So if you take a look up at the screen, we get to learn about the Herodian dynasty. And you will learn why they are called the Herodian dynasty, because Herod the Great. So when Jesus was born, this is the Herod that we're talking about. Herod the Great ruled over all of Israel-Palestine at the time, including some areas in the north and to the, uh, to the east of Israel. He ruled over all that land, and he was not so great. He was known for public beheadings and throwing people into prison. Uh, the story we get about him in the gospel is he heard that there was a king who was going to come from the town of Bethlehem, so he decided to kill all of the male children in Bethlehem. Not a great man. But he has four sons, and they split up his kingdom after he passes away. So they become tetrarchs, just means four kings. And we hear today about Herod Antipas. Now you're starting to see why it's Herodian, because, you know, Herod the Great... Herod Antipas, when you're reading about this family, it gets confusing because you're not sure which Herod it is, especially when you consider Herod Antipas' brother, Herod. It's great. So we've got Herod the Great, Herod Antipas, Herod Archelaus. Very confusing, especially when we hear about his half-brother, Herod Philip. 
come on, you guys, be a little more creative. But at least in our story today, we heard that Herod Antipas had taken the wife of Philip. Thing is, it's not that Philip, it's his other brother, Philip. Right? So, we have five men. Four of them are named Herod, and two of them are named Philip. Yikes. So then, Philip marries Herod, or Herodias, just to throw in a little more fun for you. And together, they have a daughter named Salome. Herod Antipas is also married, but he divorces his wife, and he tells Herodias to divorce Philip, and she does. So then they get married, and now everything in this family tree is super confusing, especially considering their son... You want to take a guess? No! Yeah, Herod Agrippa. I cannot deal with this family. I cannot make sense of it. Especially when you consider Herod Agrippa has a half-brother whose name is Herod Agrippa II. His half-brother is Herod Agrippa II. Explain it. Explain it, somebody. Then there's also Marcus Herod, who is their half-brother, then there's Herod II, who is one of their, their children. Then there's Herodia, who is Herodias's daughter. And finally, of course, we have Todd. <laughs> the best part is, his name is actually Thodus, but we would call him Todd. But that was his given name. He was known as Herod III. I'm going to start pulling my hair out as I, as I learn about this. That whole family is confusing. And they are a family filled with pride. They keep calling their kids Herod because they want their name to be great. So they can take all of their achievements and say, it was because of Herod that this happened. Herod did this, even though it's like 19 other dudes. So then, contrast that with the other man from our story, John the Baptist. John was not filled with pride. John lived out in the wilderness. He had no family that he stayed connected with. He wore camel fur, he ate bugs, and he baptized people. That's what he did with his life. He spent it baptizing people and telling people about the love of God, as well as speaking some truth to power. He's holding Herod and Herodias to the Levitical law that you cannot marry your brother's wife. And so Herodias holds a grudge, and so does Herod, to be honest. So, John is arrested, and eventually he's killed. He's killed because he's speaking truth to power. And to be honest, we should see it coming. Because his whole life, the Pharisees and the Sadducees hated him. They were constantly uh, trying to break up the group that surrounded him. They were trying to get rid of his disciples. They were trying to get him killed. So, when John finally is murdered by the state, they think their problems are over. But it's not so. Because we know of another man who comes along. Jesus. So, people are saying, maybe this Jesus guy is just John come back from the dead. And Herod even says it himself. But the way he says it is uh, using a a metaphor. It's a, a Greek thing, a Greek formulation. And he's saying, this is my punishment for what I did to John the Baptist. I know what is coming. 
And eventually, this same Herod will be the one that Jesus goes to and is condemned to death. So where do we find the gospel in this passage? It's kind of tough. It's tough to see it. But when we look at the wider context of the gospel, we see what this story is telling us. See, Jesus has just sent out his 12 disciples. He sent them out in pairs and sent them to different towns so they can go ahead of him to explain what the good news is. So that when Jesus gets to town, people will already know that they can come and find healing, that they can come and find the love of God, that they can come and be in the presence of the Savior. So the disciples are sent out. Then we get this story, and the disciples come back, sharing that everything has gone so well. The message has been received, and people are accepting the gospel. So with this story in between those two, we see the danger of sharing good news. We see the danger of what it means to share what Jesus has told us. See, Jesus' ministry starts with him preaching and saying, I come to bring good news to the poor, food for the hungry, peace for those at war, release for the captive. And some people hear that as good news. And some people see that as, I'm going to lose out on what I have. That's what John and Jesus did. They called people out and told them that the world was changing and it should change because the people in power, the, the Herods of the day, were struggling to do good, to do right. They were trying to make a name for themselves and they weren't caring for those who needed it most. So where do we see the gospel? I don't honestly know. Because in this story, what we are told is we are called to share the gospel, to preach good news, and that it will not go well for us. That when we preach good news, people will be bothered by it because it might mean that they have to give something up. It might mean that they are not the center of the universe. It might mean that they should not take pride, that they should not hold honor only for themselves. Because we see what that does to people. Pride destroys. And we see what calling out that pride does. I struggled to find a picture of John the Baptist that was not a picture of him with his head on a platter. Because that's who he is in history. He is a man who spoke truth to power and died for it, knowing what would happen, knowing that he would suffer for speaking the truth. So I pray that we can find courage. I pray that we can find courage to speak truth, to speak mercy, to speak peace into this world. I can't keep turning on the news and hearing about a shooting or about a different war, or a civil war, or about a fight, or a protest that turns into a mass mob of people hitting each other. We live in a world that is so filled with hate because it is so filled with pride. And I pray that we can hear John the Baptist in the back of our heads saying, 
I know the outcome. It's not going to end well. But right now, I will speak truth and love. I pray that we can hear Jesus telling us that God is here for us and that Jesus has a purpose for us to bring peace. Let's pray. Holy God, our world is suffering. Our world is suffering from greed, from dishonesty, from hatred, and it comes from every side. Help us to see that we are not each other's enemies, that we are siblings in you, that your love binds us together. Help us to see that we are here to help others, to serve you with everything that we have, to be a blessing for the world. Teach us that this is not an easy road, but that you send us out together, trusting in your mercy and trusting that your Spirit will guide us as we do your will. All this we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able and we'll join in our hymn of the day. Let us join in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Even the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. One in the communion of saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. We pray as we sing.
You gather your people into the body of Christ. Where your church is wounded, heal it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is divided, reunite it. Give us courage to speak truth, to bring healing, and to be the peace our world needs. We pray as we sing. establish equity and make justice within every nation, tribe, and land, cause laws to be written and customs to be observed that protect the most vulnerable. We pray for our political discourse as we see violence and hatred. Remind us of your all-encompassing love. We pray for former President Trump to make a full recovery and for an end to violence. We pray as we sing. On the cross, your beloved Son endured pain and death. Bring healing to those in need, hope to any in despair, and comfort to the dying. We pray especially for Rich, Audrey, Russ, Eloise, Dixie, Brad, Brian, Marilyn, Ken, Kevin, Lyndon, Mavis, Tracy, Carol, Vern, Sharon, Gabrielle, Joanne, Marge, Jim, Don, Ron, Nancy, and all those we lift up out loud or in the silence of our hearts. We pray as we sing. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now I invite you to turn to those around you and share a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, everybody.
Let us pray. Merciful God, in your Son, Jesus, you show us the way of life. You teach us to love one another and to share the gifts of our lives. Receive these gifts, fruit of the earth and harvest of our labor, and lead us always by your wise guiding. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We remember on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, giving it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Christ took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. This is the meal that Christ has prepared for us. Come, eat, and be filled. All are welcome.
Let's pray. Gracious God, you have fed us at your table and filled us with your presence. Strengthen us with your spirit that we might live as Christ's body in the world. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able as we receive our benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join in our sending hymn. to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.